Today we're going all the way back to 1955 once again as we check out AMT Ertl's 1955 Chevrolet Nomad model kit. This is a 3-in-1 kit which you can build stock, custom or drag, skill level 2 in 125th scale. Now this model kit originally came out in 1962 and it's been reissued many many times. The last issue was in 2002 but this issue comes from 1997 and has many great features that the 2009 version does not have. Now if we look on the side of the box we get this wonderful view of the model kit. We also have the specifications. So the type is a front engine rear wheel drive. It, you can build it as a three in one stock custom drag racing. Comes with a 265 cubic inch V8. Even though the box here says 283. 283 did not come out until 1956-57. Three speed manual, Firestone Supremes, all kinds of great things. And uh, the nice part is that the roof panels open up and there is an option here to turn it into an El Camino, which we'll take a look at in a minute. On this side of the box, we get more wonderful pictures of the stock version of the kit. Again, looks really excellent, and it does share parts with the Bel Air that we uh, looked at earlier. Now let's take the lid off this beauty and see what's inside. Now I must warn you that I did start to build this kit a little bit, but it's not so far gone as we can't actually take a look at it. So here it is. It says I bought it from the hobby guys back in the day with t with another 55 Nomad for 2405. So there's our instruction sheet. We also get a wonderful decal sheet which we'll take a look at a little bit later. Actually it's not that wonderful, it's just license plates. There's our side glass and windows inside this bag. So here we've got a lot of parts trees. There's that uh, optional top that you came with the kit our engine and seat belts. Now like I said I was working on it so there's our body, there's our chassis and underneath here is all the parts that I was painting up. Just the interior components really. Then we got more parts trees, we got the custom seats here, we've got the little hood scoop and suspension components. Then we get two big sheets of chrome which are in the bag here, and uh, tires which I put in a ziplock or <laughs> form lock I guess. There's our tailgate, and then we've got some red transparent pieces and our firewall, or sorry our radiator and everything else. So next up Danny the dog will take a look at our instructions. Hey everybody, this is Danny the dog here, your dog on the street. So today what we're going to be looking at is the instruction sheet Trevor always lets me do this. This is really, really cool. So here, over here, we've got our front page of our 1955 Chevrolet Nomad model kit. Now I'll just get my pointer and use the dub over mark. Okay. So here we have this box here. No, just kidding. Here we've got the box here that tells you all about the Nomad itself and how Chevrolet made it. And then down here we've got the Before You Begin and uh, it says to uh, carefully understand and study the entire instruction sheet. And uh, then here we've got the advanced version of the Before You Begin. Ah, thank you Trevor. So we're going to be uh, helping Belinda along on this build. Um, now I found out that the Chevrolet Nomad model kit is going to be re-released from AMT coming up in maybe the next year or so. Hopefully in the next quarter. But uh, I hope they restore a whole bunch of the missing parts, and we'll get into that as we look at the instruction sheet. Now, our engine builds up in two versions. We've got a custom and a drag engine, but the initial step here in step A is universal to both motors. So here we have our engine block going together, left and right side, and it comes molded with the transmission on the back. Then we've got two cylinder heads that'll glue on, our generator, our belts and pulleys, our fan, our front cover, our oil pan, and the starter motor. Now the oil pan is plated, the fan is plated, and the generator is plated. That's with chrome, of course. And if you want to strip that off, easiest way is easy off oven cleaner. And uh, make sure you follow all the safety measures and wash it really good with soap and water. Now step B shows our stock and custom version of this engine. And what we have here is we've got the stock manifold. 
and on the manifold you attach the distributor cap, the oil filler pipe, the carburetor, and the air cleaner, and then you put on your Chevrolet valve covers. Now these actually have Chevrolet in silver or chrome on there. There we've got our exhaust manifolds go on there, right and left hand side. There is a crossover pipe, but it doesn't really show it in these instructions, which is really odd. Step C shows our drag racing version. And here we've got finned chromed valve covers, which are really nice. We've got a nice chrome induction type manifold going on here. That's like fuel injection, actually. There's our injection tubes. Now there's four of them, so you get eight. Looks really cool. We got our distributor cap, which is also chrome plated. And uh, if you want to strip that again, the easy off oven cleaner. There's our oil filler pipe, which goes in the top. So all of this will give you a really cool looking drag racing engine. Panel three shows our wheel assembly for both stock and custom. And just like on the Bel Air kit that we did earlier on, the stock wheels are gonna have a plastic peg going in the back. So the hole in the back, it should be a little bit larger than the rear wheels, which have a metal axle going through them. So there you get the nice hubcap style wheel. It pushes through your Firestone tire and then the rear wheel back will click into place from the back. Now it does say to use art, artist acrylic paints in here. That's water base to paint your white wall. Because if you don't use water base and use enamel, it will never, ever, ever dry on that tire. Down here, we've got our drag racing wheels. These are cool because they've got like the American style mag wheels which pop through the tire and then we've got the wheel backing plate and then here same thing for the rear. Now one thing about it the front wheels on these have a little hole because there's going to be a cap that goes on the end and that will lock the wheel onto the front axle. Panel 4 is really really accurate. This is the 55 Nomad color availability chart and it shows the body colors that are all on here as well as the interior colors and it shows you where to paint the interior colors on the dashboard and uh, here you have a choice of either monocolor or two color paint job two-tone paint job here this is what it shows it shows coral and shadow gray on the roof all these kind of really cool things now here we have our interior assembly and there's a lot going on here. This is where it really gets cooking, guys. Because what we have is we've got a stock, custom, and drag racing interior. So to begin with, we've got the bucket, which is universal to all versions of this kit. And uh, let's start up here. So we've got our stock and drag racing style steering wheel. Then we've got the custom wheel, which has been cut down to make it look more like an aircraft style wheel with the two little handles sticking up. We've got a tachometer, which we can use on our custom. We've got our steering column, which is for stock and uh, custom end drag. But you remove the shifter lever on the side for your three speed manual transmission. And if you want the drag racing or custom style floor shift, you uh, remove this one and use the chrome one here. We've got our Elco gauges on here. Now that's for the drag racing version. I do believe you can also use a tack on the drag racing because hey, you wanna make sure your engine RPMs are up in the proper uh, range. There you got your instrument panel here, your dashboard. All that will click into place up here. We'll glue down actually. You've got this optional racing helmet. You can put that inside the car. Uh, now, okay, getting here, we've got the custom console. So you would use the bucket seats for that. That's for drag racing and custom. Then you put the console down here. There's a couple of holes you need to open up. And then this chrome panel drops in for the four-speed transmission. And there's your chrome shifter. So that's only for the custom version. And then here we've got our stock bench seat. And uh, you got the seat belts that drop in place. And then the rear seat. Now there is one piece that is missing out of this rear seat. It is an insert panel that goes on the back that looks like the floor. And uh, on the real car, the seat folds down and that panel double folds into the back of the front bucket seat or bench seat. Pardon me. That's really cool. But for some reason, that part has been missing since 1986. Panel six shows our chassis assembly going together. So here we have the chassis in the back 
And then we've got uh, shock absorbers, which are chrome plated. And we also have a rear axle, which is chrome plated with springs attached. And that's two pieces and that will all glue down onto the back of our chassis. Now, panel B1 for our stock and custom version, this is all up front. And this is where you get the steering posable front axle. So there's a lot going on here as well. First off, you want to figure out, do you want this stock or custom? So if you want stock, you put the little axle pin right in the center here of our spindle. And if you want custom, you put it on the bottom one. Because remember, this is upside down. So when you flip the car over, the custom, it's actually going to be like a lowrider in front. If you put it here, the car is going to raise up in the front once this is flipped over. So just keep that in mind. There's the stick part and you want the pin at the very, well, down here. <laughs> okay, so what happens is this is all the steering bits. So you put in the cross member first up from the bottom. Then you put the springs on. You put the bottom plate in. Then you put the spindles in the little holes here and you drop your lower A arms on top so that the top hole is on the hole of the spindle. And then you glue the backing pins here onto these little holes. You pinch this hole together and you put the, the tie rod here onto the little pin back here. And make sure you uh, note the direction of the tie rod. It's got this little stick part sticking out on this side. So when you flip it over, this little rod would attach to the steering column. Um, well, if the steering column was actually going down there. But that's how it would, should be. And also you got to make sure you've got this little arc pointing downward. Because if you've got it upside down, it might lock in here and not help you steer at all. Now panel B2 shows the rear wheels going on. And AMT has included this backing plate which goes on there. And then we've got a metal axle that goes into the rear wheels, which will slip through all of this. So make sure your alignment is nice in there. And then it's got these stock wheels going on. So in order to get the pin in here, you will have to rotate the spindle a little bit. And uh, be careful because that pin wants to fall out in the back. Now here's that crossover pipe I was talking about earlier. You're going to have to put it in. Uh, you can put it in a bit earlier, but you can't have this little piece on yet until the engine is dropped into the chassis and then that will hook up to the back end of the exhaust pipe here actually the front end right there right there now for all you drag racing fans you don't get the option of the posable front wheels but you really get this awesome looking drop axle in here now this is really cool you get a different style backing plate which will slip on here onto the little pins then you've got the transverse spring which will glue onto the front axle you got these nice little radius rods that will pop on you got traction bars in here and again the um, the tie rod right there you got this cross member that's where your engine is going to mount to so that one would go on first and uh, then as you can see down here you got these really cool hitters with the exhaust tips but that's coming up in the next panel but if you want to you can actually use all of this on the Chevy sedan. Okay, panel C2 is where our drag racing engine will drop into place. And that little pin on the engine is going to go into the little hole on the cross member up above. Now here's where it gets really tricky. So I want you guys to be really extra careful. Now, you need to scrape the chrome off of the axle here at this point. You're going to carefully slip the wheel on. You want to dry fit this. Don't put any glue in there. You want to make sure that this wheel is going to spin on this axle. And be very careful because this is a plastic axle. So it has a tendency to snap. Now, you want to make the hole big enough so that the wheel is going to spin on there with your drill. Don't drill all the way through. Just make sure there's no flash, seam lines, anything that's going to hold that wheel up. Then you're going to slip on this American mag wheel. And with a bit of little tiny bit of glue on the top tip of the pin you're going to put on the chrome hub remember to get the chrome out of that hub as well with your drill okay now that all that's said and done and make sure you don't glue the wheel on because you don't want that uh, you got your drive shaft going in there to the rear differential then you've got the backing plates again and your wheels with the big drag slicks and those will all push on to the back 
Okay, panel seven is where we start to paint the body, and I'd recommend doing that first. Uh, now, here you've got your roof color here and your body color. Now, this little body insert is going to glue in, and that will also be body color. These aprons on the side are going to be painted flat black, and same as the radiator and the support. And uh, don't forget to paint your outer tailgate. Now, that being said, you've got this nice window hinge up here. Our rear window glass has the hinges on it. And there's this nice silver window frame. Remember to scrape the paint where you're going to be using your glue contact surfaces. There is a tailgate inner and outer panel here. You've got the clear windows. Now, it says do not install if you're building the custom version. And same with the roof. you got to decide before you paint if you're going to build the custom version because you can build this as an El Camino so you're going to be cutting half that roof off so just make sure you choose what you want to build first then once that's together you've got your interior tub popping up from the bottom and a battery that goes in here as well so let's take a look at the final assemblies panel 8 shows our final assembly and there is three ways to build this model stock custom and drag racing so make sure you figure out which one you want to build first and then we can continue. So panel A shows our stock version. So the very first thing you want to do is take your assembled body and glue it down to your chassis. That's the number one step. Then we've got our radiator hose which will align with the top of the engine block and onto the back of the radiator where the little pin hole is. That'll glue together. Then you want to drop your hood down so you got to squeeze a little on the side. There's two little pins on the side of the hood and they will pop into the holes. So that's always good that you won't lose your hood like on some of the other AMT models. Here we've got our chrome plated hood ornament. You're going to glue that to your hood. Remember to scrape your chrome in there. And then in the front end you want your headlamps. That's the bezel in the back. Then the clear lens will glue inside there on both sides. you got your grill which will glue in down here. Then your front bumper glues onto the chassis. There's two little horns that stick out. And then you've got your bumper guards, which will go right behind in line with the horns sticking out. Then you've got your front license plate. Now this one sticks straight up and down. It doesn't curve back into the bumper. So just be careful with that. And then your decal will go on front of the bumper. You've also got these parking light bezels, which will glue here. And the parking light, it's clear and it'll pop in there. So all that glues there. Then in the back here, you've got a taillight bezel, which is chrome plated, which will glue in there. And then the red clear. Now on the bottom of this tail lamp, it should be white. So that goes in there and in another one on there. Then the rear bumper here has that indentation because they can't put a license plate on the back of the tailgate. So there's our license plate going there and the license plate decal on top of the license plate holder and then the rear bumper guards just like in the front will go on the horns in the back. Now panel B shows our custom version and this is why it was important to actually figure it out before you painted the body because what happens in here is you got an El Camino style roof and a rear window that goes in the back. Now this, you have to chop the Nomad roof off and leave a little bit. It'll, it'll say in the directions here how to do it. But you drop this down. You have to have your body and chassis glued together first because the back panel here will actually align in. One thing it didn't tell you is to leave out the rear bench seat if you're doing this. Just use the front bench or buckets, however you want that to go. Uh, because this panel will hit that rear back seat if you glued the seat in. Okay, so what you do here is you cut all the glass off the back and you leave the front windshield there, which will go inside the body. There's these wonderful chrome bed rails which glue onto back here, right behind the back of the roof. And then here we've got these special custom tail lamps. These are smooth lucite on the real cars, or well, the customizers did it that way. Those who glue in there. You got that rear bumper again, and then your your license plate holder and your license plate decal. Uh, I forgot to mention, so once the body is together again, you glue the um, radiator hose to the back of the radiator. There's this really cool hood scoop which glues onto the hood, 
which then drops in instead of using the hood ornament. Now here we've got different headlight bezels. These are Lucas ones. These ones have the little pin in the dead center. That was a special type of light that shone backward into the housing instead of the headlight, you know, shooting outward this way. It did a, a reverse reflection in and then came out. Uh, the light came out. Anyway, there's the uh, clear glass which goes in there. There's this customized grill shell and a little narrow grill that will glue together and then glue into the body. Now you could also use this on the Chevy sedan, although it doesn't come in that kit. So then here we got our front bumper and then we've got our plate holder and the decal. So all this glues together and you get a very nice looking custom. And finally, for all you drag racing fans out there that built this on Sunday, 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 we uh, have a few modifications to the body. Now here you've got to cut open the rear wheel arch just so it fits those drag racing slicks in there. And then you're going to glue your body to your chassis again. You're going to attach the uh, radiator hose to the top of your engine. Now the hood pops down. There's a little rectangle in there that you cut out. That's for those injectors to pop through. Now again, you can use this engine on the sedan. That would be cool if you want to build a drag racing sedan. Now here it's using the stock taillights again and the stock rear bumper with the bumper guards. And now up front, you don't have the grill in there. You've actually got this four piece uh, gas tank. That's all chrome plated. And then you put your headlight bezels in there again and your front bumper goes on. Thank you, Danny, for showing us that instruction sheet. There sure is a lot in this model kit, and boy, at the end of that, you really sounded like your voice was going away. Yeah, that made me dog tired. Oh yeah, Danny, I could tell on that one. So what we've got here is our wonderful body for our 55 Chevy Nomad. And like I said, I was actually working on this model. So there is this brace inside here, which you've got to cut out and remove. You'll see that when you get your own kit. Now there's our hood and there's two little pins on the side which hook in and lock underneath so that you can open the hood. Now unfortunately I had the hood on here before I put this down on the table and I thought I would pop the hood out and I was thinking to myself, be careful of that pin, don't break it off. And guess what I did? Broke it off. <laughs> so I'm going to have to uh, drill a tiny hole in here and put in a brass pin just uh, so that I can actually have that. Because again, it's a little bit of manipulation. You gotta squeeze the hood sides and that can always spell a bit of trouble. Now, speaking of the hood underneath, you can see four mold buttons. You're gonna have to scrape those down. There's that little rectangle I was talking about. This is also appears on that Bel Air sedan. So you would take your hobby knife and cut this out using the back end of your blade. And then your velocity stacks will be able to pop through that hood. Okay, putting the hood to the side. This is the El Camino roof down here on this parts tree. And there it's got the nice engraving on the back so that you can build up your pickup bed and the nice little ribbed roof. Now, somewhere in here, it will show where to cut the roof off. You wanna cut it off there and cut off along the posts along the back. And then this will drop in place and look quite nice. And while we're here, there's our wheel backing plates. Now, if you turn this over, there is some mold marks in here, but they have put in the texture of the roof. So that's always nice with those nice roof bands inside. So there it is there. Okay, I'll move that to the side. Here's our tailgate. And this is really wonderfully done. It says Nomad up here. There's those bars that you can chrome up little center section. Be careful of these little T's because they also are prone to break off on the tips. I've done that before. The whole thing fits in nicely. Now on the uh, interior pan there's two little hooks that stick out and that locks in the tailgate. So put that to the side. Now let's take a look at this body. This is amazing. The wheel arches are correct in here. It's got the Bel Air script off the back. Then the nice ribbing on the roof. Inside is all the ribbing, just like on the real thing. You also get these little sun visors molded into the top of the roof. There are some very fierce mold marks in here. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. So you just gotta make sure you clean all that up. 
Uh, I did glue in this little piece here that's on the firewall. Again, you want the you want it to be caved in like this. And then there's a little wiper motor in here. Somebody pointed out that was a windshield wiper motor, so thanks for that. This part here will all be painted body color, but these aprons here are painted flat black. Again, the front end is really, really nice. Uh, there's a gas filler door in there. It's got the proper indentation around the rear bumper. Sorry, I'm used to this being zoomed in a bit more. <laughs> One thing that always uh, interested me was why this one side is wide open and the other side has two little holes in here. There's nothing on the tail lamps or anything that in indicate that it needs these holes. So I, I never understood why AMT made it like that. Oh, now here we go. If you look inside, you'll see this raised line in here. See that? That is what you need to remove if you're going to do the drag racing version. So uh, get out a Dremel tool with the the uh, circular sanding edge or whatever and zip this out and there you go now again up top here somewhere in the roof panel but I'm not sure where I think maybe it's the very first rib here that's where you want to cut out so that this roof panel here will fit in and align I'm pretty sure that's where it is but always remember to measure and check and uh, all the rest. So there's our Nomad right there with all its components. Again, really wonderfully done. And you got to think this model kit was made in 1962 originally. So they didn't have computerized CNC machine tools and all the rest. What they did back then is they actually had a really large version of this car and they would have a duplicating tool. So it's like a pen and then on the other end is a whole series of these little arms and things. And uh, they would go off the bigger model, reduce the size to 125th scale, go off the bigger model, basically drawing all over it. And on the other side in the tool, the metal tool, it's actually engraving this thing in reverse on the tool. So that's how they did it back then. And to think how amazing this thing looks for uh, that old technology. Here we have our chassis, and there were some sinkholes in here, which I have filled with some Tamiya putty. And I've let this putty sit on here for a very long time, maybe even like five, six years. So this should be nice and dry for me to sand down now without any risk of shrinking. <laughs> okay, there's our gas tank back here. And in the Nomad, the spare tire was mounted flat in the back, and there was a panel hiding it. So that's nicely represented in here. There's our stock exhaust pipe and our muffler. And that's molded in place, unfortunately. So for your drag racer guys, you're going to be carrying around this stock muffler hanging in space under your car. There's our front horns, and that bumper will glue onto the very edges of the horns here. And all the suspension components will drop in this open area up front. But again, look at how nice this is for the old way of doing things. All the ribs in here underneath that frame really excellent stuff. It looks just like the real Nomad. If you flip it over, there are some sink marks in here. You might want to clean up this area just so the interior fits a little bit better in that space, but overall it's not bad. So again, really excellent work from AMT of old. Now here we have the components that make up the interior. They do not come pre-painted. I actually started working on this, like I said before, and this is a nice beige color that I painted. Beige seems to be one of the universal colors in these nomads. And then, you know, with your two tones, of course, you're going to have like this being blue or red or green or whatever. But beige seems to be the primary color in the two tone schemes of all these different nomads. Now here you got your rear tailgate and you can see the nice detail inside it with those ribs. This, of course, will fit nicely right up in here. Uh, speaking of the interior tub, actually, there's the ribs back there, as you can see. Again, really nice. Now, unfortunately, these holes are actually going right through the carpet. So hopefully the uh, front seat covers them, which I think it does if you glue it in properly. So you're okay there, although your seat might be up quite a bit. Look at the nice door panels inside of there. You've got the door handles and the waffle texture, which is... Uh, actually, the the uh, defining texture of the Nomad interior panels. 
there you've got the seat the pedals molded in place unlike the sedan where these ones are not there they are there on the nomad you will have to scrape off these mold marks which this one's really high and unfortunately when i painted this i uh, did not do that so i'm gonna have to paint the carpet a different color the carpet is nice it's got the nice uh, parting marks here just like the real thing would have had there we go now you can see what I'm talking about. There's those two little uh, pins that are on the end. you got to be careful with these because your tailgate's going to lock into those. So they're also prone to breaking off. <laughs> I've broken this thing in the past, so, uh, you know, it can happen. But anyway, that's our interior bucket, and again, it's really nice. Now, when you've got that roof, you're not going to want this rear bench seat in here because if you look the roof now i hope i don't scrape my paint the yeah that that back floor panel here makes up the difference in that cargo area so that's if you're making this into the el camino now if you're not making it into the el camino one of the components that's missing out of here is the insert for this back seat and that's really unfortunate because what you'll need to do is not use the roof saw it off here and then find a way to duplicate this in interior insert panel and carve this roof panel to become the new insert panel. And that is a big pain. So I hope AMT re, uh, notices that this is missing and opens up that hole in the mold to let the, the part be recreated. But anyway, look at the nice texture on the buckets or bench seat up here. This is molded as one piece. So again, uh, AMT did a good job on it. Is it one piece or is it two? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so there it is. And then we've got our front steering column with the steering wheel. Again, really excellent work. And our dashboard. Now, I do think I shouldn't have painted this tan or the steering wheel with the beige, I mean because I think these are actually going to be the body color and I don't think I was planning on this thing to be beige. But anyway, there you go. Now here we have our parts tree which includes our engine block and transmission, battery, intake manifold, air cleaner, the stock one. There's our exhaust manifolds, our oil filler, we've got a starter motor, we've got a generator, we also have our belts and pulleys, then we've got our valve covers, the stock valve covers, and our cylinder heads. Here we've got our brake backing plates, our insert for our custom grill, our insert for our console, or actually the console lower part that's in the interior, and then we've got our seat belts. So there's all the detail. You can see just how nice this is, how much it looks like the real Nomad. And on the back, we also have some mold mark buttons and things that we've got to clean up especially on the manifold. Make sure you get that nice and clean. And I do believe, no, this, yeah, the bottom of the oil filter, or the air cleaner, pardon me, should be sanded a bit flat. There's a little bit of a bump. Same with the uh, 53 uh, Ford pickup truck. Our seat belts have mold buttons on the bottom, so again, you got to sand those off to get them to sit on the seat flat. But overall, I mean, this looks really good considering the vintage again. Here I've got two parts trees together, but that's because this one is really short. What we have here is our drag racing seats, or our custom seats as well. These are bucket seats, of course. Then we've got our stock suspension components. These ones are for the drag racer. That's the backing plates, which glue on that chrome axle. There's our drive shaft. This is the hinge for our rear window. And then we get a drag racing helmet, which is also pretty cool as an accessory piece. So just moving this up again, look at that nice suspension. There's flash around there. Flash, ah, which we got to scrape off. And then there's the backing plates. Now turning them over, they all look nice. There is a mold mark in that helmet. You can see a flash from the mold button. So I just get rid of the flash and glue this thing uh, sitting on the seat like that, you know, ready for the race car driver to get in there. Again, nice work. And uh, that front steering end can be a bit tricky, so just be careful on it. There's our bucket seats, and look at, they've got the four-point seat belt harness in there. So again, something really nice to paint. 
Now these seats were fiberglass, so there's actually like the fiberglass matting off the back. There's these funny three little dots and then a sink mark. So again, you'll have to clean those up. And uh, it's pretty chunky around the sides of these things. Now I know fiberglassing is not the smoothest, especially with the mat outward. But if you wanted to uh, clean these up, you will need your sandpapers in there. So again, it looks really, really nice. Now this parts tree includes our wonderful hood scoop, which glues onto the hood, of course. Then we've got our upper radiator hose, our coil springs, our king pins, our tie rod, the front brace for the drag racing car, and our uh, exhaust manifold extension and crossover. So uh, there we go. And when I do this build, I'm going to be working on this car as a build with Belinda. And um, I'm going to show her how this all cleans up to get the front steering really well done. So we're going to look for that video coming in the far distant future. Underneath the hood scoop, we've got two mold mark buttons. Those will have to be filed down and removed in order to make that nice and smooth on the inside. But overall, again, really wonderful work. Now here we've got our radiator supporting wall and our radiator. You can see the wonderful little horns on there. Now just get the camera in focus. And if I flip it over, you've got the nice texture in the radiator, as well as that central hole for the upper radiator hose. And there's our little oil or uh, water cap right there, the thermostat. And then back here, we've got those brackets for our license plates. You can see the big mold button off the back, which you'll have to clean up with your hobby files. But on the other side, it is nice and smooth. This model kit includes two chrome parts trees, so we're going to take a look at the first one first and the second one second. And I chose this one to be the first one. So here you've got the wonderful grill. You've got this very fragile window frame, so be careful when you cut it out here that uh, you don't actually shatter it. This little thing right here, if we turn it over, there's our custom grill. You can see just how much uh, more narrower that thing is compared to the stock. There's our wheel backs, which are nice and chrome. The American style mag wheels down there. Here we've got our stock hubcap style wheel. Three more on the other tree. There's the little chrome caps for the wheels. So you gotta be careful you don't lose them. That will glue onto the front axle, which is on the other piece. There's some nice uh, drag racing linkages, bars and little springs and stuff. The uh, valve covers. Again, really wonderful work by AMT, and the chrome is really, uh, really top-notch on here. Uh, there's our front, or rear bumper, actually, and the little parking lenses and everything else. So again, really, really nicely done. Now, I do believe the instructions are incorrect. It looks like the uh, turn signal lamp is actually molded into those bezels. It's not a clear piece that glues in afterwards. So somebody in the instruction sheet made a mistake so don't go looking for those little chrome, uh, clear glass inserts. You'll never find them. Here we've got the second chrome parts tree. And again, you can see just how cool this is. You've got your front bumper there. And then you've got those wheels again. Now these are the front wheels and you can see the hole in the center. Those will go on these axle pins on our dropped axle. So again, you want to get the chrome off of here so that the wheels will spin freely. There's the fan and the generator, the chrome-plated generator, and our fuel tank components. That's also part of the fuel tank there. The rear axle and these wonderful exhaust dumps. I just love these. I've used them on other cars as well. There's the intake manifold for the fuel injection setup and our chrome oil pan. And turning this over, you can see the nice springs on here. Now, if you're building the stock version, this is the only axle you get, so you're going to have to strip that chrome off of there and paint it nice and boring. <laughs> so again, really wonderful work though by AMT. And you can see just how tall those velocity stacks are down there. Must be about maybe even half an inch. So again, really wonderful. Oh, and look at the uh, Elko gauges. Again, really cool stuff from the nostalgic era of drag racing. Okay, everybody, I stand corrected and I must apologize because you actually do get the clear turn signal lenses here with a lot of flash around them and very, very tiny. So be careful. <laughs> there's the headlights for our Lucas with the hole in the center. And there's our regular uh, low beam, high beam type headlamps that this car had. There's our opening tailgate. 
and our rear window for the custom version and our side glass here and then our rear tail lamps. So let's bring this up a bit closer. You can see the nice pattern on the headlights. Remember these go north and south, east and west and not like 45 degree angles or 20 degree angles or everything else. There's a lot of flash in here so be careful and also be especially careful on the hinges here because the clear plastic is more brittle than the gray plastic. Again, a lot of uh, flash ah, on the side windows. And that is again because this mold is from 1962 and this is 1997. So again, I can only imagine that this may have got worse and worse as time progressed. Would be nice actually to get a, you know, retooled uh, mold off of here. Do a reverse molding or something, or even uh, modify it with a CNC machine some computer assistance. There's our red tail lamps for the stock version. Again, tiny stuff, but that's because that bezel goes around them. And there's the clear Lucite style for the custom. So again, the glass on here, it's a bit rough. You might have to remove quite a bit out of this, but overall it will look nice once it's in the kit. Here's our tires for the 55 Chevy Nomad kit. And these are the old style Firestone tires which I do believe have been retired, uh, no pun intended, because the uh, tread pattern is still that vertical style and the newer ones are more like a actual tread pattern. The nice thing is they've got the little circle around here so you can paint your white walls in there with that acrylic paint. So they do end up being very nice. Now over here we've got our Goodyear Blue Streak Dragway Special Tires. These ones have been a drag racing staple in a lot of the old AMT kits. Again, I'm not sure if they've actually reworked these things, but uh, they're very easy to spin in your spinning tool just to get that edge sanded down because the edge of the tires are actually really, really crisp and they wouldn't be that crisp on the actual drag slicks. But again, you can see just how much bigger these tires are and deeper than uh, the regular stock Firestones, which are quite skinny in profile. Hey everybody, this is Danny the Dog coming at you at the end of the video just to show you the decal sheet. And if you were looking for something really big and exotic, well, I'm sorry to say this is it. So we actually get three license plates for the front and back. What we have here is an Arizona E55 Mad, and then we've got a Colorado Nomad R. And uh, finally we get a more historic looking California Bel Air license plate. And that's about it. Here I've got an example of the 1955 Chevy Nomad kit built using all the drag racing components and a bit of the custom components as well. I've got the Lucas headlights in here. I did add in a grill insert from the 57 Chevrolet Bel Air. This is actually a 57 Buick grill from the customizing parts and I cut it down to fit in the 55 Chevy grill housing. All the pinstripes on here I did myself using Artist One-Shot Enamels, the good old customizing paint, the Sign Painter paint. With the exception of these Gomad diamonds in here, that is the Zinc Chromite paint from Testers. There's our drag racing wheels on here and the little um, dumps sticking out the side. Firestones up front, Goodyear drag racers in the back. Had to cut open the arch in there. I painted on this nice little spider web detail in the back. Now here we go into the tailgate. This is where it gets really cool. This is extensive pinstriping right here. There's those custom Lucite uh, tail lamps in the back. Look at the stripes and the dots in there. Again, really cool. All this will open. The tailgate flips down and that goes up. Not going to try to do it here. I also pinstriped the interior, which you can't really see. There we've got this side of the car, passenger side as well. There's our nice uh, little starburst effect. And again, really wonderful stuff. Uh, I showed this model to George Barris and he just loved it. He actually signed it underneath. I can uh, open up the hood and show you that. Maybe. I don't know. I guess I can't. But his signature is underneath. You just got to take my word for it. Here's a top view of our Drag Racing Nomad kit. And again, you can see the wonderful pinstriping I put on the top of there. That is a tiki face. So we'll just go up over here so you can see it better. 
there you go all hand painted with a brush a lot of work on here I, the only problem is my lines are not like dead laser straight they were done by hand so they are a bit shaky but overall this is what our nomad looks like once you work it all up and so turning this underneath you can see the wonderful drag racing i-beam front axle and all those radius bars and supports back there again really cool stuff and a real fun kit to build and you can also put all this stuff underneath on your Bel Air sedan if you just happen to have these parts lying around. Now here I've got another built example of the 55 Chevy Nomad kit. This one I built from the 1986 edition of the kit and I built it when I was really young. Remember back in the 80s when the neon paints came out and they were the hottest thing in the world? Everybody wanted the neon colors. This is actually like petty orange, if you think about it. But at any rate, this engine here has those drag racing velocity stacks in it. And I do believe I can take the hood off this time. Well, maybe not. But yeah, you can see those velocity stacks sticking up underneath and the uh, gas tank for the dragster. Now this kit is pretty rough. It's been uh, a long time. <laughs> you know, when I built it, I was about eight or nine. Painted with a brush on those uh, green, I guess, stripes or whatever is going on. Now this one did have a decal sheet with all this on there back in the day. This model has the steerable front steering. My dad helped me with it, but I guess now I can do it on my own on the real thing. Again, you can see how nice that works. And uh, there's the drag slicks, but again, look at how high this arch is. I think we added in some blocks on that rear spring to raise it up more. The tailgate, now this is what I was telling you about how I know that the pins are broken off because my pins are broken off. Dad tried to fix this side with a little piece of plastic with a hole in it. It's actually kind of a good idea. Might be a better way to do it. But again, I think the pins broke and they're sort of T-handled, so it's kind of hard to replace them. Now on the back of the seat, this one actually has the insert in here, even though like I, I glued a bunch of stuff in the trunk. I'll take an overhead shot in a minute. But again, you can see just how this all works with the steering uh, linkage in there and everything else. Oh, and that's the thing there. There's that El Camino top cut right in. Again, uh, we had two of these. One was the Bel Air. That one's sitting in a box all busted up uh, from 86, I'm saying. And then there's this version. So again, dad helped me cut that roof back in the day. But overall, this is how it looks. So here we've got an overhead handheld shot of the Nomad. So uh, sorry for the wobbly cam. But again, if I turn this around, you can see our racing seats inside. The El Camino style roof on there. There's what's sitting in the trunk area. And again, that seat has the uh, proper back in there. I'm tempted to bust it out, but you know, maybe I shouldn't. But overall, there it is from that upper three-quarter. Again, a really nice model kit to build. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our AMT Ertl 1955 Chevy Nomad model kit. And if you want to see what great models that we have available right now on our web store, don't forget to visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And I'm going to leave a link for that that you can click on at the end of the video in one of these corners. Thank you everybody for watching our model car unboxing video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And if you really want to show your support, click that join button right below this video. Until next time everyone, happy model building!